Hey guys, and welcome back to another Rocket League Tips video. Today, we're going to be going over a popular topic on the channel, and that is controllers. Specifically, which controller is the best when it comes to Rocket League? Now, I've wanted to make this video for a while, ever since I saw some shocking data revealed by another Rocket League YouTuber named Rocket Science, but I didn't want to jump to any conclusions before I tested the different controllers for myself. So a week ago, I switched over to PS4 for the first time ever, and after a week of having now played with both controllers, I think it's safe to say he was right. Before I talk more about this though, I wanted to thank you all so much for 30k subs. It's actually unreal to me that we've grown to over 30,000 subscribers in only like three months of uploading Rocket League content, and it's even crazier that we managed to get to this point while still over 95% of you all watching are still not subscribed to the channel. All jokes aside though guys, if you're watching right now and you happen to not be subscribed to the channel, then please consider subbing if you like this video. It's completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. Anyways, without any further wait, let's talk about which controller is the best in Rocket League. Alright guys, now the topic of controllers is highly contested, so I'm going to do my best to give an unbiased review here. That being said, I will say straight out of the gate that when it comes to certain aspects of the controller, one option seems to stand out to me above the rest, but I'll get more into that later on. Okay, but when I talk about controllers, which ones am I actually referring to? As many of you know, there are hundreds of different options to choose from, and there's tons of different brand controllers to pick from. But at the end of the day, there are really only two options that most people decide on, and that is of course Xbox One and DS4 or the PS4 controller. So those are the ones we're going to talk about today. Now, to really understand why I like one of these controllers more than the other, we're going to have to break down the different perks of each controller. So let's stack the Xbox One and PS4 controllers side by side to see which one stands out. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about between the two controllers is price point. After all, the price point is the main reason these two controllers stand out above the rest as the best value options, because the reality is not many of us have $200 to be blowing on fancy controllers. Now I've looked online for a little while, and it seems that even with the shutdown, you can find both these controllers for around $60, which means this far they are evenly matched, so we're going to need to find more pros and cons to decide which one is the best. The next topic I'm going to go over is comfort. Now at the end of the day, comfort and feel does come down to preference, so certain people will have different opinions when it comes to what is the most comfortable option. But from what I've heard, talking to different people, and from my own experience, the Xbox One controller seems to be the better choice for comfort. The reason for this primarily comes down to the build and size of the Xbox controller. For one, the Xbox controller is slightly smaller, and it's also more curved rather than rounded on the edges, so it's easier to hold. What this means is that for most players, it's going to be more comfortable to use the Xbox One controller than the DS4 controller over long periods of time. So when it comes to comfort, the Xbox comes out just slightly ahead. The real reason I'm sure most of you are watching this though is to determine which controller is better for performance, specifically when it comes to Rocket League, right? Because if one controller has a clear performance edge over the other, comfort becomes less of an issue, at least if you're a competitive player, and it makes more sense to pick the best performer in that case. So with that being said, let's move over to the next topic and talk about performance. The first thing I'll go over with performance is the joysticks. And while some of you might think this is subjective, I think if we're specifically going to talk about Rocket League, the PS4 has the clear edge when it comes to joystick and trigger performance. Now, keep in mind, I've played on the Xbox controller for multiple years, but just recently I decided to make the switch over and I've noticed my inputs have been significantly more precise, especially on the joysticks when it comes to the DS4 controller versus the Xbox one. Now, for those of you who don't know, I use a unique set of controls inspired by another pro player named Rizzo, where basically my left joystick is my accelerate button. So I don't have a specific button dedicated to drive or brake. It's all on my joystick. 
What this means is as a player, I'm really, really sensitive to changes in my joystick sensitivity. And when a controller gets old, I notice pretty quickly when something is off. Now with all that said, I can confidently say the joystick on my new DS4 controller is much more precise than my previous Xbox controller. Granted, this might be because I had my Xbox controller for a few months, but even still, I found myself, for example, dribbling way, way better than I was ever able to before on the Xbox controller um, after switching over. So when it comes to joystick performance, I think the DS4 is the winner. Personally, I also like the triggers on the DS4 controller much better because they're a little more sensitive, and since I use my triggers for boost, I find it much easier to control on PS4 than it was on Xbox for me. So when it comes to trigger performance as well, I also think the DS4 has a slight edge. Now just to be clear, with all this talk about performance, I do want to come back and say when it comes to button comfort, I think everyone likes the Xbox a little more. Even in my opinion, as a new fan of the DS4 controller, I'll admit the Xbox buttons are a little more clicky and responsive, they're a little easier to press down, and they just feel better and more comfortable to use. But like I said earlier, what really stands out to me as a competitive player is performance, and when it comes to that, I think the PS4 has the edge. But if my personal experience doesn't convince you, and I totally get why it wouldn't, I'm actually going to go over some test results right now that compare the Xbox and PS4 controllers actual performance. Now, as I was saying earlier, with the joystick and triggers, I definitely noticed an improvement when I switched to PS4, but with the buttons, it was a little harder for me to definitively say whether one was faster than the other. Okay, so like I said at the start of the video, a guy named Halfway Dead actually made a video that inspired this one, where he went over different statistics on the controllers. Specifically, there were two main things he tested input lag and input lag distribution. So basically what he was testing is how long it takes a controller to respond on average, and then how much this response time varies on average. Now what's really important to pay attention to here is not just input lag, but more so input lag variance. Because think about it, in a game like Rocket League, what matters most is consistency. You need to be able to flip, dodge, or make whatever movement you wanna make at a very specific time. So it's more important that you can trust your controller to be consistent rather than it just being as fast as possible. Another way to think about it is this. Imagine you're deciding between how much FPS you can have while you're playing. You can either pick a computer that goes up and down between 50 FPS and 150 FPS, or you could pick a computer that gives you a stable 100 FPS. Now, obviously that 100 FPS isn't quite as quick as you might be getting with the 150 option, but I think most of us would rather take the consistent frames over the chance of getting high frames. So if we bring this back to controllers, you can imagine why you'd want a more reliable controller than necessarily the fastest controller. Now, this is the main reason why playing wired often feels better than playing wireless and why most pros actually do end up playing wired. Now, if we start to look at the rocket science study here, he actually found that Bluetooth responds quicker some of the time. But the problem is there are also times where the Bluetooth will just drop out and completely miss something, which is why you probably enjoy playing wired more because it's more reliable and consistent. So now if we actually compare the different wired controller options, what you'll see is that the Xbox wired is actually better when it comes to performance of just input lag than the PS4 wired. But when it comes to which controller is more reliable, which one is more stable, the PS4 controller comes out on top. In other words, the Xbox controller might be faster than the PS4 sometimes, but there are also going to be other times when it's way, way slower, and those drops are gonna cause you a big headache. Okay, so with all this said, what's the conclusion? Well, it seems from the data that the PS4 controller is much more reliable than the Xbox. If we look at the input lag distributions, it seems that even though Xbox can be faster, there are times when it deviates really heavily. And so you're probably better off going with the PS4 controller if you care about performance. Now, keep in mind, these measurements are button presses, not necessarily joystick or trigger movements. And at the end of the day, these are small differences that 
you may or may not notice based on how competitive of a player you are. That said, from my personal experience, I have found the PS4 controller to be slightly more responsive with these other movements as well. So while it's not definitive, I think it's safe to say that more than likely the PS4 controller is the best if we're talking solely about performance. Okay, so now that we've talked about price point, controller comfort, and controller performance, can we say which controller is the best? Well, considering the controllers are the same prices, I think the answer is yes, we can say which one is better, but it depends on a case-by-case -case basis. So if we're talking about which controller is the best for comfort and which one has the best feel, I'd say the Xbox One controller is probably the better option. But if you're somebody who cares about performance and we're talking about which controller is the best for performance and gameplay, I'd say based on my personal experience and the data we have, the PS4 controller is probably the better option. Now, just to be clear, these differences across controllers are minor, and I think at the end of the day, that's why they are similarly priced, right? They offer very, very similar things. So what this really means is which controller is best for you is going to come down to what is most important to you. Do you care more about performance or do you care more about comfort? One last thing I want to mention, guys, is I know the PS5 controller is supposed to be coming out in around a week, sometime around November 12th. So when that comes out, maybe I'll have a different answer for you all. Maybe if the PS5 controller is as comfortable as the Xbox One with the performance of the PS4 controller, I think it would be the best. But until we know that for sure, I think you're going to have to decide whether you want the controller that's best for playing casually or the controller that gives a little bit of a competitive edge. Okay guys, that is about all for this controller review. Now, I wish I would have been able to give you a more definitive answer because at the end of the day, a lot of this is speculative, right? Some of the things when it comes to comfort are personal and some of the things when it comes to performance are not necessarily certain. But regardless, I hope the information I shared today was helpful to you all and hopefully now you know which controller is best for you. Before the video ends, if you're new to the channel and don't know about the monthly giveaway I do, then this is the part of the video where I'll talk more about that. Basically, at the end of every month, I pick a random subscriber to win two months worth of free private coaching from me. Now, normally I only coach my Patreon members, but if you get picked, I'll coach you for four sessions over two months completely free of charge. So if you want to enter for a chance to win that, Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and join my Discord linked in the description below. I run tons of giveaways on my Discord on top of just the monthly coaching giveaway, and it's an awesome place to find new people to play with, get help from other players, and support the community and channel overall. So make sure to check it out if any of that sounds interesting. Okay guys, that is all from me for this one. But if you want to see more of me, make sure to check out my videos, peep my Patreon, and of course, join my Discord if you haven't already. Anyways though guys, that's all I've got, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.